And so I read through this amazingly well written and well thought out um, posts talking about all the signs of this. And I don't like, I get where you're coming from, but a lot of these little instances don't necessarily mean that he's autistic. And most of these things I do. So like, I really don't think, like according to this, I would be autistic. Dear Diary. So I've always been someone who clings heavily to fictional characters um, to the point where when I was a kid there were times where I would like find a character that I wanted to be like and I would start shaping my personality to match theirs. There were some times where I would even like want to completely change how I dress to match them and even like ask my mom if I could legally change my name to match theirs. Like that was the extent that it went to. Um, I remember one character like wore orange sweaters. And at this time, I did not like sweaters. And throughout my entire life, a constant, orange has always been my least favorite color. But I love this character so much, I wanted to start dressing like this. <laughs> so when I say that um, I shape myself out after like the fictional characters that I really like, um, that's not an exaggeration. And um, some of it is definitely, like I said, like pulling from the characters and shaping, but I think a lot of it too is also just seeing myself in it, whether it's this version of myself that I want to be or just um, seeing parts of myself already present in that character. But yeah, my entire life, fictional worlds have kind of been my escape. Um, and attaching to these fictional characters has helped me to define myself in a lot of ways. Um, I Maybe it's not always a good thing. Maybe it's more harmful because I'm like, finding my identity in fictional characters instead of in myself, and that's something I probably need to look a little closer at and examine in myself, but that's not what I'm talking about today, so I'm just gonna ignore that bit. <laughs> this is all just to say that fictional characters, super important to me, and when I find a new one to obsess over, I go hard into the obsessing. <laughs> um, and I think um, pretty much any time, like, I haven't done a deep dive into this, and I probably should. I think pretty much any time I find one of these characters that really strikes a chord with me, and I really start to obsess over them, it's probably because I relate to them in some way. I at least know uh, multiple examples of this being the case, so I, it makes me think that it's probably more often than not that it is the case. And so something that I've noticed more recently is a lot of these characters that I've become obsessed with to some degree are actually autistic coded characters, which makes a lot of sense. It just further feeds into the whole, oh, they're characters I can relate to kind of thing. Uh, if you're not familiar with the term, let me just, I have my cheat sheet here. Um, Autistic coding is when a character is not explicitly labeled as autistic, but whether intentional or not, the character is written in a way that paints them as an autistic person. Um, so like think Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. It's never actually said in the show that he is autistic, but I'm pretty sure anyone who knows anything about the show would say that Sheldon's definitely autistic. Um, Wednesday Adams is another great example. Uh, so like, it's like, oh yeah, though that character has to be autistic, right? But they haven't come out and said it, so like, we can't know for sure, but they're, they're autistic. <laughs> um, and so the whole reason that I'm even talking about any of this is because, like I said, I get these characters, I obsess over them, and I want to talk about them and info dump on them. Um, and <laughs> the um, Netflix's live action 
Avatar The Last Airbender series just came out this week. So that's what's on my mind right now. Um, and there is a character from it, my absolute favorite character in it, who I would say is definitely autistic coded. Um, and I actually have a interesting history with like this character. I'll get into that in a little bit. I, it's just, it's really on my mind right now um, with the live action, watched that, um, finished that up last night, actually. Um, I think it was really good. Obviously, it's not the original, but um, I think it's a great tribute to the original. Um, there's a couple of changes that I don't think were for the best, but for the most part, I absolutely loved the live action. Um, but this is not a review of that. Uh, this, uh, I'm just here talking about Zuko. <laughs> That's why I'm here, um, cause uh, Zuko is one of those characters that I am super obsessed with. I love him so much. Um, when I first started watching the original animated show, I actually did not grow up watching it. I did not watch it till my husband introduced it to me. But as we're going into this, he's like, "I know who your favorite character is going to be." I'm like, "Okay, you know me well enough. I believe you." We watch the first episode. Zuko appears on screen and it's just a few minutes into his appearance I'm like so th this is who you said would be my favorite right? <laughs> like, I, th this this is clearly who my favorite character is going to be right <laughs> he has all the tropes that I love in characters and he's like yeah obviously um so from the very beginning Zuko was my favorite character <laughs> um Shortly after watching this show for the first time, um, I'd say I was probably like 25, 26 at this time, um, so a few years ago. Uh, this was before my whole journey of figuring out I was autistic. Um, I see a post online where it's talking about how Zuko is autistic coded and I'm like huh what and so I read through this amazingly well written and well thought out um posts talking about all the signs of this and I'm just like I don't like I get where you're coming from but a lot of these little instances don't necessarily mean that he's autistic. And most of these things I do. So, like, I really don't think, like, according to this, I would be autistic. So clearly, that's not the case. Um, so, I, I was just like, nah. I dismissed. I was like, this is not the case, obviously. Um... Nice head cannons, but I, I don't see it. <laughs> um, and so then, in the past couple of years of realizing I am autistic, I came across this post again. And I didn't, I didn't remember all the points in the original post. Um, but as soon as I like saw the reminder of the post, I didn't even like delve into reading it again. I just saw the reminder was like, oh. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so obvious now. Oh my hat. Yeah, it is so obvious that Zuko's autistic. <laughs> and I'm reading, then reading through the list with a different perspective now having like figured out that I am autistic and I'm like, oh yeah, this totally does completely add up. Um, while before I'm like, I don't know that that's really an autistic trait and yeah, it's just a couple few little things that doesn't mean he's actually autistic especially not when they're all things that I do anyway but <laughs> then I'm I'm just reading through it again I'm like yeah yeah check 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 and I'm just remembering Zuko's whole characterization I'm like I see it so, so much. Um, so, uh, I'm going to keep 
this discussion spoiler light. If you have not seen Avatar The Last Airbender, I highly recommend watching it. It is an amazing show. Um, but I'm talking about this as kind of just like concepts of autistic coding in characters. Zuko's my example of this. Um, but I think that it's still a discussion that you could take part in and enjoy even if you haven't watched it. And like I said, I'm going to um, avoid spoilers as much as I possibly can in this discussion. One of the very first points on the post that I came to, and honestly, one of the best points, because we see this so much from Zuko, is him copying other people's behaviors without necessarily understanding what he's doing. Um, one example is a flashback with his mom, and he's like, hey mom, wanna see how Azula feeds the turtle ducks? And then throws a rock at the turtle duck. His mom's like, what? What? Don't do that. That's not right. And he's like, oh, I didn't know he's what Azula. Like, I just saw my sister doing this, and so I thought that it was acceptable behavior. So even though Zuko is precious and doesn't like hurting people, he, like, he's not the kind of person who would do that normally. That's not in his character profile, but since he saw his sister doing it, he thought it was a funny thing, and he's trying to be funny and relatable, so he's doing what his sister does. And I have done, this was one of those things where I'm like, I have totally done stuff like that, where I see someone make a comment or say something, and I'm like, I don't think about the, um, I guess, repercussions of it. Like, I don't fully think it through. I just think, oh, this is funny and relatable action slash thing to say. And so I just yoink, take it for myself um, because I want to be funny and relatable. And then I do or say it and people are like, what? That's not, I'm like, oh. Yeah, and like now that I stop and think about it, that is not something that was nice to do or say. And um, I am not in favor of it. I'm not endorsing it. But I just, I thought it was what I was, I thought it was how I was supposed to act. And I just, I did, I didn't know. And like, we see this from Zuko a lot, especially in regards to his sister of, um, oh, she shows off her firebending moves, oh, I should show off mine, even though he doesn't think about the fact that um, his skill level is not his sister's, and it's, I mean, this is just one thing, obviously, it's not, if you do this, you're, that's not, none of this, okay, disclaimer, <laughs> I'm not saying any one of these actions that if you do this, you are autistic, I'm saying these are examples where Zuko's autism coding shows through really strongly is what I'm saying about this. And just because you do some of these things, it does not mean that you're autistic. Autism is more than just a few traits, a few habits. It is a part of who you are and how your brain works. So there's a difference between doing some autistic traits and your brain actually working that way. Um, and I would argue that Zuko's brain does work that way from what we've seen, but obviously it has never been flat out confirmed, which is why it's autism coding and not, oh, he's an autistic character. Okay, disclaimer out there, cool. Another, uh, thing with Zuko is the one track mind where obviously we see it in him being all, I must capture the avatar and, and like not letting anything deviate him from the course. He is fixated on this thing that he absolutely has to do. And I mean, same. Anytime I get something in my mind where I'm like, oh, I have to do this. You better not interrupt me. You better not try to get me on a different course because it will not work out well um, for either of us because I will yell at you not meaning to, I will just snap and yell at you, and then I will probably break down myself if you, uh, d like, distract me or try to get me off of it. Like, I will probably have a full-blown meltdown. Oh, and hey, what do we have see Zuko do when he does this kind of stuff? He has a full-blown meltdown. Uh, <laughs> but it's even beyond just the whole, 
oh, I'm fixated on capturing the Avatar, so I must capture the Avatar. Like, we even see it with him in just idle conversation of when a conversation takes a path that he didn't expect, it takes him a little bit to find his footing and catch up because he's like, this is not what I expected for this conversation. Like, why? Again, I'm trying to avoid spoilers here. So um, I'm not going to go into this specific example because it's later seasons. But um, why are you telling me all this when we're supposed to be focused on a task here? Um, I, I'm not entertaining this conversation because we're supposed to be focused on a task. And that is not on task. So why are we talking about this? <laughs> I do that. I do that. Da! Again, looking down at my notes. Sorry. Um, cause I wanted to try to organize my thoughts on this some because otherwise I would just be info dumping and, um, I mean, maybe on an autism podcast, that'd be an okay thing to do, but I want it to still be somewhat like organized thoughts, uh, <laughs> though I, I feel a little all over the place today. So it, it might not be coming out so well. Um, so apologies if that's the case, but Anyway, moving on. Another thing that we see in Zuko to reinforce the autistic coding is um, taking things at face value. His father tells him, do not return home until you have captured the Avatar. The Avatar hasn't been seen in a hundred years. That's basically Ozai saying, return home when pigs fly. It's the same equivalent. It's something that he does not think will ever happen. But Zuko takes it so seriously. He's like, he never says, um, oh, I'm being punished having to find the Avatar. Oh, um, he never says it like that. It's always, I've been given the mission of finding the Avatar. Like, my father gave me this mission mission. Like, it's a serious mission. <laughs> um, and it does not occur to him. This, I love Zugo so much, and this is something that gets me fired up <laughs> about uh, how much I hate his father, is it does not occur to Zuko that his father does not expect him to ever return home. And all he wants to do is to be a good son. And he thinks he's been given this very important mission that's super serious. And even when, um, like, Iroh tells him, remember the Avatar hasn't been seen in a hundred years. Don't get your hopes up too much. He's not hearing it because he has his brain fixed on what his father told him. And he, that does not leave room for deviating from that train of thought from that path. He has to find the Avatar. And, okay, like, the thing is, like, my first time watching the show, I didn't, I was with Zuko. Like, I was like, oh yeah, he's been given the mission of finding the Avatar. It wasn't until I had a post that pointed it out to me that I did realize, oh yeah, his father didn't expect him to actually find the Avatar. I literally took it my first time watching it that Ozai knew the Avatar was still out there in the world somewhere. And he's like, well, my son's disobeyed me. I need to do something with him, teach him a lesson. This will teach him a lesson. Go find the Avatar. I fell for it too. So like, I'm not saying, oh, Zuko, how could you think that this was a serious task? when the Avatar hasn't been seen in a hundred years. Because I felt for it too. Once I saw a post talking about it, I was like, oh yeah, now it's really obvious that that's not the case. But if someone that I really like looked up to and trusted told me something like this, I would 100% believe them and hang on their words and no one would be able to convince me to doubt that. And the fact that Ozai took advantage of that in Zuko makes me so furious. But also in the people that's close to him, his instinct is to 
trust them and believe them. And um, we see in the show that he has to constantly say to himself and remind himself, Azula always lies. That is a mantra that he repeats to himself, Azula always lies. Because even though she has lied to him time and time again, his first instinct is to always believe her. So he has to keep reminding himself of that. Um, and I mean, I kind of, and kind of like in the same uh, ballpark as that stuff. Like, like I said, once he, he's like got it in his mind, his father entrusted him with the task. He's not gonna let anyone bring doubt into his mind, not going to let anyone um, make him think of things in a different way. And that, I mean, kind of is along the same lines as a one-track mind kind of thing. And I mean, that's how I am a lot, where I get um, a certain thought in my mind, and this is the way things have to be. I can't, um, I can't entertain changing things up from the way I've already decided the world works, from the way I've already decided things have to be, from the way I've decided that I am. I can't just <laughs> shift my worldview, which, I mean, I imagine that'd be a difficult thing for anyone, neurotypicals included, to shift your whole worldview. But, like, even in lesser, like, not worldview level stuff, but even for, like, lesser things, that's still the case for me of um, finding it hard to shift how I think about things. I just was, like, stretching my arms out, and then I'm like, I, I feel like I'm trying to water bend or something. <laughs> that's not what I'm doing. I'm not trying to bend here. <laughs> but, um, anyway, yes. His mind can't be changed easily. My mind can't be changed easily. Um, you see that in a lot of autistic code characters. I kind of mentioned earlier, um, Zuko is seen often having meltdowns when things don't go as planned. Um, it's easy to see those, I think, and they're kind of painted as, uh, like temper tantrums. Like, he gets angry, he starts throwing fire, he yells at his crew, um, but it, what it really is, is a meltdown. Things didn't go to his, go the way that he had, um, planned things out in his mind. Something went against, um, his, oh, I'm like so at a loss for words right now. Um, like he decided X, Y, Z is how things have to be. And suddenly X is no longer a possibility, so he has to change how he does that part, and he does not like that. That that's not okay because he decided it's X Y Z, so I it can't be Y Y Z. It has to be X Y Z, and um that that's not okay. And so he kind of breaks down a little bit, and his anger comes out. And we see Zuko having a lot of anger issues anytime things don't go the way he had anticipated, the way he had planned. And, um, again, I'm saying this a lot, but same. This is another one of those things where I was, like, looking through the list, and I'm like, but that's how I am when I have to change things. Like, I, when I was a kid, and, like, there was a last-minute change in plans, I would, like, full-on, like, sink to the floor throwing a tantrum. Because I could not handle that change. Nowadays, you know, I try to be more in control of myself so I don't sink to the floor having a tantrum. I just dissociate and shut down and can't function. You know, far, 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 far healthier way to handle things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't lash out in anger like Zuko does. I just like freeze up and shut down. Um, but it's the same kind of concept where Things are being changed up, they're not going according to plan, and you melt down, you shut down, you... It, it's like, oh, I'm, it's so hard to describe the sensation of changing of plans, of even like the most minor thing, like I said, like 
we're still going to get the same result, but we have to change up one way that we're doing it. Mm. It's like a physical yank at my guts because that's not what I had planned. That's not how it's supposed to be. And uh, it has made me like physically ill before when things like that happen. And hey, guess what? In Avatar The Last Airbender, we do see Zuko get physically ill at a point when, um, again, trying to light spoilers in case um, you haven't seen the show, because um, this is a big moment what I'm referring to, so I'm not going to go into detail. But um, he has a little bit of a worldview shift, and as a result, he, I've seen it referred to as an angst coma, what happens to him next. Like, he gets, it makes him so physically ill. He can't do anything. And I don't think that that is an exaggeration of something that could happen um, to me. Like, like I said, I get physically ill whenever... Things don't go the way that I planned for them or, I mean, and it's not always changed plans. It's anything that can lead to any kind of dysregulation within me. Um, I will make myself physically ill. I remember when I was younger, I had to, I went to the doctor um, and uh, we were talking about like I had constant stomach troubles and like I had to keep a food log because like, oh, maybe it's something that's, um, and not agreeing with me, but it, it wasn't food related. Um, and we never really got a clear, eventually basically came to the conclusion that it was just my emotions causing me to be sick. Um, so again, hard relates to Zuko there. And uh, it's just such a great, um, depiction of what it's like to be wrestling with yourself like that and making yourself physically ill that's not something I see in media a lot is someone making themselves physically ill over emotional issues um so I really after the last airbender does so many things so well with um showing amazingness in characters. <laughs> Again, my words are not wording today. Apologies. Beyond those things, um, I, I could go on about the meltdowns and especially the making himself physically ill so much, so I'm going to force myself to move on um, to Zuko's kind of iconic social awkwardness. Um, we love him for it. It's adorable. Uh, we have, you know, he doesn't always pick up on social cues. Um, Iroh uses his beautiful metaphors and, uh, Zuko is often seen to take them literally. And then when he's trying to be all wise, he will, like, quote Iroh's metaphors without actually understanding what they mean. And you can tell he doesn't actually understand what they mean. But again, it's that uh, mirroring aspect of, ooh, someone that I trust and admire said this, he's really wise. I want to sound wise, so I'm just going to say what he said and hope it will have the same results. <laughs> um, He's seen messing up jokes a lot and um, is also seen struggling with expressing empathy. And note, I'm not saying that he is not empathetic. I'm saying he struggles with expressing empathy, which are two very, very different things. Um, because that is a common, like, stigma with autism is that autistic people aren't empathetic when actually oftentimes autistic people have extremely high empathy, we just can't express it very well. Um, and at least that's how it is for me. I, 
I w if I can relate to what I'm seeing at all, I will get so emotional, breakdown crying. <laughs> um, like, I am a very emotional, very empathetic person. But, like, when it comes to having to comfort someone, when someone says something that, um, talking about their struggles, I want, I want to be super supportive and I want to express um, that I'm there for them and to, like, comfort them, but I don't know what to say. I'm not good at it. It's, you know, Zuko's iconic. That's rough, buddy. That That's all I know to say, you know? It's like, yeah, that's rough, buddy. Because, like, saying I'm sorry feels so insincere. And it's just, yeah, I, I struggle with expressing empathy and... We see that with Zuko multiple times of any time things do get more on the emotional side, he seems uncomfortable. Like, he doesn't really know what to do. <laughs> and hard relates. Uh, when things get, like, super emotional, I just make a joke. Lighten the mood a little bit. Uh, make it so I don't have to say something super deep. <laughs> That's my strats. Also, another... Thing that we see Zuko doing is scripting conversations ahead of time. This is in a later season where he is seen talking to a frog, scripting out an entire conversation of what to say, but when he does not get the scripted responses that he planned for, he then doesn't know what to say in the moment when the conversation actually comes because that was not the responses that he had scripted and planned for. Um, but in his scripting, like, he had an introduction that he scripted and that was his introduction. Like, he approaches the group and starts the conversation the exact same way he had practiced it with... Zuko here, um, and <laughs> full admission and disclosure time. Um, my normal YouTube videos, you know, my intro is Brie here. <laughs> I, um, when I started the channel, was like, how do I start videos? Oh, I feel super awkward and uncomfortable. Let me channel my awkward and uncomfortable Zugo. Zugo here. Um, so yeah, that that's where my channel intro actually comes from. <laughs> Is I was trying to script out my first video and I'm like, um, how do I yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's how I got Brie here, is I'm just channeling Zuko at the beginning of my videos, and it has stuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, scripting conversations, I do that all the time, anytime I have a big thing. Um, important, com if it's a super important conversation, um, like when I quit my first job, I wrote it out and like I mean I'm like I brought in an entire speech and I'm like I'm going to read this to you <laughs> you're, you're gonna sit there and I'm gonna read this to you um and then you can have your input once I'm done <laughs> because I need to get through my thoughts um <laughs> I need to write out my speech first and I've done that multiple times writing out everything I'm going to say first. But yeah, and then, like I said, um, the live action Netflix show, um, dropped this week. And I was, like, I knew they were changing some stuff, so I'm like, okay, are they going to take away or downplay Zuko's autism coding? Um, I wasn't sure. And, oh, they did not. <laughs> they, if anything, they played it up even more, and it made me so happy. It's my, Zuko's my favorite thing about the live action show. Shocker, Zuko's my favorite thing about Avatar in general. But, oh my, it's dialed up, I swear. Like, there was a couple points where Zuko would, like, act in a certain way, and I would just look at my husband, and I'm like, yeah, that's, He's totally um, acting like that because um, he's thinking it through with 
because he's autistic and so he's seeing things this way and thinking it through like this. And then Zuko's next line would be explaining what I just explained. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, I called it. I'm like, yes, I understand you. And I mean, like, he has a special interest in the Avatar. It's really clear. Like, he has a whole notebook filled with so much information on the Avatar, and Aang says, like, that was how he learned the most about the Avatar, was through Zuko's notebook, because he had such detailed notes. Like, that's my notebook on Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> it has just so much stuff in it. And I'm like, yes, that characters that I relate to in some way and they're not all autistic coded and so like a lot of it's like I relate to these aspects of that character and it's hits differently for me when a character is autistic coded because I'm able to relate to a character with aspects of myself that I don't as often get to relate to characters so when relating to characters is as important to me as it is, and there's these traits that aren't often seen in media, it just, it hits so different. And I love it. And it just makes me so happy. <laughs> and I know this may seem like kind of a weird subject, um, but it was on my mind. So I, A, wanted to info dump about it. <laughs> and B, I just think my perspective shift is so interesting because like I said when I first saw that post about Zuko being autistic I'm like I don't see it at all and then I learn a little bit more about autism and about myself and now I look at it and I'm like oh yeah Zuko is a perfect example of an autistic coded character it's so obvious to me now it feels good to learn and see the world differently and a little clearer. <laughs> like it's the same way about myself where when I first, um, when like the idea was first presented to me that I might be autistic, I'm like, there's no way I'm autistic. It was the same reaction to the Zuko post. And then I start learning more about it and I'm like, this explains so much about me that never fit right. Oh, here's the missing puzzle piece. And I'm once again discovering myself and like getting my character development <laughs> through the lens of a fictional character <laughs> of learning this about me and learning this about Zuko and learning um, this different perspective of what autism can actually look like in people. Like I'm learning so much more about being autistic and I'm getting to see the world through a different lens. And it's, it's great. Um, it fills in a lot of gaps for me beyond just fictional character analysis. Um, so I, I don't know if this episode was basically like all a metaphor of me learning about Zuko, me learning about myself. But it's just been me learning in general um, and finding myself in finding these portions of myself in autistic Coda characters and just the beautiful experience that it is. This is Bree signing off. Remember to challenge your perspective every once in a while.